knows how to dialogue with their mind for maximum success? If you know, put your hand up. Who knows how to properly manifest to get whatever you want? Anyone know? This is good because I love an audience that I can teach from scratch. Who knows how to powerfully build their self-esteem? Good, I'm glad you know. Do you know, I trained with very eminent psychologists all over the world, and they all told me a lie. They didn't know it was a lie. They all said, oh, you know, the mind is very, very, very complicated. And if you want to be a therapist, well, you've got to learn the workings of the mind. And by the way, it takes a lifetime to understand how your mind works and a second lifetime to apply. I thought, well, how does that work then? That doesn't even make sense. The mind wouldn't go, hey, here's a brilliant brain. And when you're 85, with a bit of luck, you might crack it. But unless you believe in reincarnation, how are you going to even apply that stuff? That just never made sense to me. And I've always thought outside the box and challenged everything. So then I began to study, well, how does the mind work? Is it really complex? Does it really take a lifetime to understand? No, it doesn't. You can actually understand the workings of your mind probably in five minutes. And I'll tell you what they are in five minutes. And the most important one to understand is the first one. Your mind does what it thinks you want it to do. And it bases it on one thing, what you tell yourself. I don't want to fail my exams. I don't want to mess up in front of this hot person that I'm attracted to. I don't want to speak and go, oh, 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 and look like an idiot. And what you're telling your mind is, I don't want to do that. And your mind's job, which is a really interesting job, is to make your thoughts real. If you know from the time you were two, and I'm working a lot now, I've got my RTT in schools because I want people to understand. Your mind's job is to make your thoughts real. Your thoughts aren't even thoughts, they are blueprints. Every thought you think, your mind, your body, and your psyche work to make real. So here's a question. If your mind's job is to make your thoughts real, what's your job? What do you think your job is? Great job, by the way. What is it? Think better thoughts. thoughts. I mean, imagine if we taught kids that at five. Your mind's job is making your thoughts real, and your job is think better thoughts, because every day your mind makes your thoughts real. So when you understand the workings of your mind, point one is your mind does what it thinks you want. And if you go, I don't want to be rejected, I don't want to be dumped, I don't want to fail, I don't want to get it wrong. I didn't want to go to school on Wednesday and take that exam. Your mind goes, okay, I'm tuning in. Don't want to go to school on Wednesday. Why don't I give you a raging headache, chronic diarrhea? I don't really care. I just understand to give you what you want. And you've got to be very careful. This is the genie. Your wish is its command. Be careful what you wish for. If you start saying things like, oh, I'm not good at attention, or I want attention, I want lots and lots of attention, that sounds like a good thought, doesn't it? Let's imagine I wake up and I'm thinking, I want attention, I want attention, I want so much attention. The genie is tuning into what I want, attention, but I could have explosive gas, going to get lots of attention for that. I could go out and start shoplifting. I could start acting in a really weird way because I didn't tell my mind I want positive attention for being smart or kind or interesting. So the mind is not logical. It just tunes into what you think. And when you think better thoughts, you change your life. But in a minute, I'll show you how to do it. But understand You only need to know three things about your mind to have it always on your side. (coughs) Does what it thinks you want, and it bases it on what you tell yourself. Who's ever done this and thought, oh, God, I'm so stressed. I've got so much work and studies. I would love a few days off just lying on the sofa. Anyone ever wished for that? Anyone notice that they get the flu or they get sick because the mind said, well, you said you wanted some days off lying on the sofa. I've given it to you. Who's ever thought, I'm dreading, dreading, dreading this exam? One of my clients told me that when she was a kid, she had to take an exam, and she was so anxious, she actually went and put her hands on her mother's 
um, hair tongs and burnt her hand so she wouldn't have to take the exam. Another of my clients said she put her hand through a plate glass window because she was so anxious about taking an exam. But what their dialogue and what they're saying is, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. I got to get out of it. How about if I burn my hand, lacerate my hand? That's really horrifying when all you have to say to your mind is, hey, mind, I got a great memory. I'm going to ace that exam. It's going to be amazing. I'm smart. I remember everything. My mind is like Google. It takes in everything. Because the truth is, every book you've ever read, every lesson you've sat through, you do remember everything if you tell your mind that. So point one is your mind is always doing what it thinks you want. If you haven't got what you want, but if you've got a lot of stuff you don't want, you haven't learned how to expertly dialogue with your mind, but I'm going to teach you today. Point two is the way you feel about everything. It's pretty simple. It all comes back to two things. The pictures you make in your head and the words you say to yourself, which you are free to change. The way you feel about everything, everything, everything is down to the pictures you make in your head. And the words you say, I don't want to get on that plane, it's going to crash. I love getting on a plane. I've got three hours to read a book, eat some food, do what I like. I, I don't like being the focus of attention. I love being the focus of attention. I don't want to go on this date in case I get rejected. I'm going to go on a date. I'm going to meet someone amazing. It's all going to work out. So if the way you feel about everything comes down to the pictures you make and the words you say, that means that your job is to make better pictures and say better words all the time. And it becomes really, really easy. And the third thing, which is very vexing for therapists like me, is that our mind loves, loves, loves what is familiar and really hates what is unfamiliar. If our mind could choose, it would always run back over here to what's familiar and run away from what's over there, which is unfamiliar. So something unfamiliar. I've got to learn a new language, go to a new school, meet new people. I've got to do something new. And the mind goes, no, no, let's go over here. You see, familiar kept you alive once. If you lived in a fort, you wouldn't go, hey, a bit bored with life in a fort. There's some native Indians. I think I'll go and hang out with them because they might kill you. So we learned a long time ago, familiar keeps us safe and unfamiliar might kill us. But here's the thing. If your mind loves what is familiar, all you've got to do is make good stuff familiar. And one of the things you can do to make familiar that will change your entire life is to make self-praise familiar. I'm good, I'm smart, I'm kind, I'm nice, I'm interesting. You can say whatever you like. I'm compelling, I'm fascinating. You have to start to make good words familiar. If you want to change your life on a dime, I cannot recommend enough. Make self-praise familiar, even more familiar. Go over here to self-praise. Make it so familiar. And make criticizing yourself unfamiliar. Move away from that. I'm an idiot. I got rocks for brains. I mess everything up. You can change your life so quickly by making praise and self-belief familiar by constantly doing it and meanwhile, make criticism unfamiliar. See, your mind can't go in two lanes. Here we are. This is a highway. There's that lane and there's that lane. And this lane, I'm confident. I'm making praise familiar. I believe I've got something to offer the world. I'm nice. I'm smart. And this lane is, oh, God, I'm really anxious and I get things wrong and I'm not very good. But you can't be in both lanes. There's no way you can drive in both those lanes simultaneously. So decide which lane you're going in, which is always that one, and stay in it. The mind cannot hold conflicting beliefs. I'm good, I'm nervous, I'm smart, I'm anxious. I'm a good student, I've got a terrible memory. People like me, but I'm scared of rejection. That really messes up your mind because it wants to go into one lane or the other, but it can't go into both. So you've got to make good stuff. familiar. Who here wears contact lenses or has ever worn lenses? Put your hand up. Who here put a bit of silicone on their finger, shoved it in there, and thought, oh, I've got to go through these lenses straight away. I put it in and I can do it. Anyone put a lens in and found they got the hang of that immediately? Because I put one in once. I couldn't even get it out. I, was like, I had to keep it in all night because I couldn't get it out. You have to kind of squeeze your 
eyeball with nails and get that thing off. And I went to an optician. They said, we can't touch your eyes in America. We get sued. And I couldn't get it. I, anyway, and then I went to bed. And I woke up in the morning. It was there. And I thought, I'm not actually going to do these again. But I could have done. I could have made lenses familiar. But uh, frankly, I couldn't be bothered. I thought, no, it's, it's not worth it. But if you put some silicone on your finger and shove it in your eye every day, it becomes so You can do it in the dark. You can take your lenses out without a mirror because you make it familiar once upon a time wasn't even familiar going to the bathroom. Eating a banana wasn't familiar. You got it in your hair and your eye and your ears. Eating yogurt, you would have got that everywhere. So you've got to make stuff familiar. And the way to massively boost your self-esteem is to make praise familiar. People think praising yourself is arrogant, but if we had a scale, actually, is there a pen? Let me get a pen. If this was a scale, and that was arrogance, and that was feeling insecure. They're kind of the same, they're just an opposite thing. In the middle is confidence. I like myself. Self-esteem, I believe in who I am. You see, self-esteem doesn't mean what I think of you, it means what you think of you. If I said I hold you in the highest esteem, what I think of you. But self-esteem is what you think of you. And when you have self-esteem, you're not arrogant, but you're also not insecure because you understand that it comes from in here. And you have the power to change in here massively when you learn how to dialogue with yourself. So we want to be the CEO of our own mind. How do we do that? Well, it really is very easy. Don't complicate it. It all comes back to how do you talk to you. I've been working with teenagers all my adult life, and I never cease to be horrified by how they describe it. I'm an idiot. I'm a piece of you know what. I have rocks for brains. I'm not very good. My dad never sees me, so I guess I'm worthless. And I always teach them, look the most important word you will ever hear to yourself in your whole life, and not for some hot girl or some hot guy, or even a teacher saying, gosh, you're smart. You are the best kid I've ever had in my class. Or even a parent saying, wow, parenting you is the joy of my life. No, the most important word you will ever hear in your whole life come from you. Because if I said to you, Oh, you're so smart. I love what you're wearing. I love your hair. I love your shoes. You're amazing. Could you stay behind today and help me empty out my stuff? I've totally manipulated you with praise. And the mind understands that. If someone is mean, we go, well, my dad was really mean today, but he's got some issues. He's fighting with my mum. He's got some problems at work. He's just having a bad day. We can actually work out why someone is mean or nice, but our mind believes whatever we tell it. If you're mean to yourself, it's true. And if you're good to yourself, it's true. Thank you so much. You've been amazing. Thank you. Thank you.